Now let's listen to another interesting poem called The Duck and the Kangaroo. Class 9, CBSC English. This poem was written by Edward Lear, born 1812, died 1888. Edward Lear was an English artist, illustrator, author and poet and is now known for his literary nonsense in poetry and prose. He has been played in radio dramas by In the Need for Nonsense and by the Coast of Coromandel. The kangaroo, if you are familiar, is a very gentle animal and it's native of Australia. It carries its young, called a joey, in a pouch in front of its stomach. The kangaroo is herbivorous, by the way, like a deer or a cow. The duck is a common fowl often raised for its meat. A close cousin of the duck is the Indian swan with its long and shapely elegant neck. While they appear to be serene on the water, their webbed feet are actually paddling vigorously underwater to keep afloat and moving. On land, the duck waddles. That means it walks from side to side like the gait of a pregnant woman walking. Okay, here's the poem, stanza one. Said the duck to the kangaroo, Good gracious, how you hop over the fields and the water too, as if you never would stop. Now due to its extremely long, powerful hind legs, the kangaroo can hop and leap great distances, perhaps 40 to 50 feet at a time. It uses the tail to balance itself in flight. To continue with stanza one, my life is a bore in this nasty pond and I long to go in the world beyond. I wish I could hop like you, said the duck to the kangaroo. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this word. Long means to dearly wish for something. Stanza two, please give me a ride on your back, said the duck to the kangaroo. I would sit quite still and say nothing but quack the whole of the long day through. And we'd go to the Dee and the Jelly Bow Lee over the land and over the sea. Please take me for a ride, oh do, said the duck to the kangaroo. Said the kangaroo to the duck, this requires some little reflection. Perhaps on the whole it might bring me luck and there seems but one objection. In this word, a little reflection means it requires me to think it over. Which is, if you let me speak so bold, your feet are unpleasantly wet and cold and would probably give me the room at ease, said the kangaroo. In this poem, the poet has used this word room at ease, which is a short form for rheumatism, you know, pain in the knees. And let me speak so bold means if you will permit me to say so. Continuing with stanza four, said the duck, as I sat on the rocks, I have thought over that completely and I bought four pairs of worsted socks which fit my web feet completely. Rough knitted socks are what are called worsted socks. And to keep out the cold, I bought a cloak and every day a cigar I'll smoke, all to follow my own dear true love of a kangaroo. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the word cigar. A cigar is nothing but rolled tobacco, like a fat cigarette. And uh, are you familiar with the typical emblem of Sir Winston Churchill, known to smoke a cigar all the time? Stanza 5. Said the kangaroo, I am ready, all in the moonlight pale, but to balance me well, dear duck, sit steady, and quite at the end of my tail. So they went off into the pale moonlight, with the duck balanced on the end of the kangaroo's tail. And the story goes that, so away they went with a hop and a bound, and they hopped the whole world three times round, 
And who so happy? Oh, who? As the duck and the kangaroo. The poet concludes that nobody in the world was as happy as the duck and the kangaroo. Isn't that a nice poem? Simple, funny poem. The next poem we are going to read is On Killing a Tree by Gheev Patel. This is a serious poem about conservation of greenery and forests.